Aquaculture's welcome to AccuQuilt Live. I'm Pam, Hel Pam Heller. I don't even know my name. Pam Heller, AccuQuilt's cutting expert. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, Emily's in the house. How are you? I'm doing great. Okay, you have some exciting things to share this I morning. Do. Are you ready for this? Yes, look. Can we get see that? I sewed this. She sewed this. I that. sewed this, there. ladies and germs. I did this. So I take a lesson this weekend. Yes. With Judy, this expert on on Singer Featherweights. So yes. we went through the basics. I we played with tensions, which I didn't know that that was a thing. I learned so much. So, Yay! So much so that I'm taking another class on yes. painting it from the Featherweight Doctor this weekend. And the Featherweight Doctor, she's been on our Tuesday show. She's fabulous. I'm so excited. Look at you learning how to sew. We're going to get there. When she knows how to use her machine quilters, um, the three of us, her and I and Joe, are going to take a trip to our local quilt shop and we're going to do some picking fabric and cutting some fabric and making some stuff. I'm excited. That's exciting. Excited. All right. Today is all about the new Go Carpenters Wheel die. It gives the illusion of tumbling blocks. And today I'm going to show you how to put it together. So where is everyone watching from? Cindy is watching the Barefoot Quilter. Thank you, Cindy. I do love to be um, barefoot. Oh, look, Elizabeth is from Papillion, Nebraska. That, like, we can see that from our office. Mm -hmm. And Beth from Meridian, Idaho. Thanks for joining us today. All right, let's take a look at some new projects from our, today's intro video. First is this really cute pillow from Phyllis C. So, Emily, do you know the dye hair? So cute. It's the Starry Path. Starry Path, which actually is in my top five. AccuQuilt dies. I really like it because you can change the colorway and make it look so different. Yeah, it's a cool. Next up is this fantastic butterfly quilt from the Rocky Hill Quilts. Thanks for sharing. That is our good friend Adida Sitar's butterfly. Um, we talked about that a couple weeks ago on a Tuesday show. Okay. Next, we have this lovely piece by Terry L. And it's so funny because we, yesterday, I think, Emily, we talked a lot about the um, crazy quilt die. Yeah, so it comes in two sizes, one for the go and the go big. Terry, I love those beautiful colors. I think this one's my top three. Is it your top three, Crazy Quilt? I think quilt? so, yeah. It's just so fun and scrappy. Yeah, it is. And the nice thing is that, that it finishes to the block. You don't have to trim it down like other scrappy blocks. So. Exactly. All right, here is my photo of the day. This is my Oakley bug. Um, we went, she loves to dress up like Pioneer and Cowboys, and which is a really cool place, and we... Um, they had a carpenter there who was doing woodworking and Oakley was just fascinated. And since today is the carpenter's wheel, the question of the day is, do you know a carpenter? I feel like so many quilters have siblings or spouses that are carpenters. Sure. Okay. And before we get too far into the show, um, I want to give a huge shout out to Jill, who works in our marketing team. Can you get a great shot of that, Justin? Um, okay, every year for Christmas, I buy myself a gift. This is my gift to myself this year. Jill's husband is a carpenter, and he made this beautiful, beautiful wooden um, quilt block for me, which looks like the carpenter star, doesn't it? Our carpenter's wheel. Isn't it beautiful? It's gorgeous. So huge shout out to Jill's husband for doing that for me. Absolutely. I know. I love it. All right, now for those of you who watched last week, at the end of our show, we had a little bit of outages with our lights. Everything was fine. Joe and Justin and Brock took care of all the things. And our AQ Live team, um, we replaced some of the lights, so we are back up and running today. Okay, so, but thank you all for your concern because I feel like, holy smokes, there was some uh, little drama there. Now, here is last week's finished project. So let me grab it here real quick. So Emily, were there some questions that we had from last week about our little puff quilt? Well, yeah, Elizabeth actually wondered um, if overcasting the seam would work instead of a straight seam. Right, so I think she's talking about could she use her serger to do it, so yes, okay. is the answer, okay? So we have a little graphic here because this is my finished one, which is fun. Um, to finish your project, so last week we finished the top, you put the bat, the backing and the top right sides together, and then add the batting to the outside of the backing. Then you stitch around and you leave an opening. I left an opening about this wide, okay? Turn your quilt inside out, 
and then top stitch around it like I did here. And the thing about the top stitching is when you do it, because there's puffy batting in there, you wanna kind of push that batting away to, from the seam so you can just sew it all together. That's awesome. Now, if you want to, Oh, see, this is how you can see. You could right here in the center, you could do little, um, you could make little stitches, like you could tie it with yarn or you could use your sewing machine mm -hmm. and do a little stitch there. I didn't because this is so little, okay? This needed 81 squares, so you can always make them bigger. Kind of fun, okay? So this is my finished project from last week. I know some of you wonder if I ever finish projects and the answer is yes. Yes, I do. And a huge shout out to Diane S. Um, one of our viewers, she was our spot on go-to color of thread. So the go-to color of thread that I always use is this color. It's kind of this olive green, there we go, um, kind of color. This is what I use all the time. And the reason is, is that it blends into that fabric all the time. And you're thinking to yourself, that is not a good color, but actually it is. So um, I loved the question because so many people use like white and tan, but this is my go-to color. Yeah. All right, Emily, we have this great promo today. Do you want to talk about it? We sure do. Yeah. So our promotion, we already have a lot of great markdowns on our yes, website. Yes, we do that don't even require a promo code, yeah. they're already marked down. So today's promotion is going to add an additional $20 off your order when you spend $125. Okay. Um, you're gonna use the code 10, or excuse me, 20 more, that's 20 more. 20 M-O-R-E. Right. And that'll give you that additional $20 off of that order over 125. Perfect. And then we still have the bundle, right? For the we, Carpenter's Will, you yeah, wanna talk we about do. that real quick? Absolutely. So we've still got the go to the nines bundle, get. Um, which is the carpenter's wheel and the nine inch cube, as well as that 10 by 24 cutting mat. Mm -hmm. um, that one is on sale for the $299.99. Okay. And we still have the bundle um, available for the Go Big Carpenter's Wheel, which I think is personally the best value because it, you also get the Go Big Electric and the bundle is $649.99. The right. cutter itself is usually $699.99. Right. So you're, you're paying less for the cutter itself than you are to get all the goodies. Yes, and you get that great Carpenter's Wheel. Back. Yep, and since it's over $225, it's gonna ship to you for free within the contiguous US see all good things happening here at AccuQuilt, okay? So quilters, if today you're thinking, oh, I'm not really sure about this carpenter will die, um, I'm gonna tell you, we have really limited stock. And once that stock is gone, we will not get another shipment of carpenter dies in until January, okay? So today's a really great day to take advantage of one of those bundles, mm -hmm. get the carpenters will die. Okay, and speaking of that, I'm gonna give one away. Um, be sure and share this video in your personal Facebook page for the chance to win. Emily will announce the winner at the end of our show. All righty. All right, now the Go Carpenter's Wheel is our die to try for the month of November. I cannot, first of all, believe that it is November. Um, and it is our latest bob or block on board. So I wanna show you the block that it makes. So here is one. Um, this is not the block we're going to make, but this is a really cool. This is like reproduction fabric from um, uh, just, I love the colors. I love that kind of teal blue, that green color and the orange. Mm. It's just a really great look in this pattern. Okay. I'm going to show you how today to create this block. Ta-da which is all full of grunge. Uh, thank you to Moda for making grunge. Okay, and so this is a really great block to use our Go Quilt program with. It's a free program at AccuQuilt.com and it allows you to change the colorway of thousands of patterns, including this one. So this is the one I'm gonna show you how to make today and we're gonna talk about some dyes that go with it, okay? So Emily, before we get started talking about the dye, um, are people, do they know carpenters? Yeah, a lot yeah, of them I'm, do. I'm not surprised at all. Yeah, Diane's father was a carpenter. There we go. Um, her, Gail's husband is a carpenter, same as Nancy. Um, Tina says she knows several. Yes. Um, so yeah, we've got quite a few in the family too, which it's is so, so fun. It's so fun, because I, often I think things like a carpenter is kind of um, 
maybe an older generation kind of trade. Yeah. And I know so many who are younger kind of carrying on that tradition. Yeah. And I listen, if you know a carpenter, they better be making it like a quilt rack or a quilt ladder. Absolutely. Okay, <laughs> just saying. All right, so this is our Go Carpenters Will Die. Where do you want it? Right there is a great place. This, uh, the shapes are on a 10 by 24 die board. So you, it will fit through our Go and our Go Big and our studio cutter with the appropriate adapter. You want to make sure you have that 10 by 24 cutting mat so all of the shapes are cut. All of the shapes on this die are screen printed for easy placement and to help you keep track of your pieces. So I want to talk about the shapes on this die. Quilters, I have seen over and over questions that say, hey, can I make this block with my cube? And I'm going to tell you the answer to that is no. These, my friends, are diamonds. In the cube, the shape is a parallelogram. All diamonds are parallelograms, but not all parallelograms are diamonds. And it's this diamond shape that allows you to add the other pieces to make rectangles, okay? Now look, we have specialized dog ears, so from here to here is that perfect quarter inch seam. Now, I wanna point out a couple of things about this die. First of all, shape B, these are half square triangles, okay? So lengthwise grain, you want that grain to go parallel to the lengthwise blades. Shape D is gonna fit right here in the ends of these um, uh, diamonds. And then shape C, Emily, do you know what shape this is? Is that a quarter square triangle? It is a quarter square triangle. Now, if you were to sew two of these pieces together, well, actually these shapes, when you cut them are the same as shape B, okay? So you want to make sure you keep them as quarter square triangles, not half square triangles. All right, so the difference is the grain, right? We want that lengthwise grain to keep those shapes nice and tight. Mm -hmm. All right, so these are the shapes that you need and they're all on one die board. We call it a bob or a block on board. Join Lynn and Erica and I on Tuesday, November 16th. Is that right? Tuesday is the 16th. Is it Holy already? Smokes. Oh I think gosh. it is. Wow. I think it is. 12 noon central time. We are going to release two new Bob dies. Register in the link below. What do they want to register, Miss Emily? Because they're going to be eligible to win all those fun prizes that we give away on the show. That is exactly right. Mm -hmm. That is exactly right. Okay. So um, before I cut some fabric, I want to show you. I'm going to move my stuff and things here. Um, so right there is perfect, Brock. Um, okay, so this makes an 18 inch block, which is the biggest, um, this die makes the biggest block of all of our bob dies, okay? And for this block, you want this contrast color, which is red, and this obviously is white. And then what you want is a light, a medium, and a dark. That's how you get that illusion of that tumbling block. Okay, is that you have those three different colors. And this is the pattern that's on the packaging, so it'll be really easy to put together, okay? So you wanna make sure you have a light and a dark and a light. Now, it makes an 18 inch block. So Emily, what size cube would go great with this? Absolutely, um, I believe the nine inch cube would probably be yes. the best, right? Yes, um, so um, this is a star block from the nine inch cube. So look at how fun that would be. You could make them out of the same colors. So and then you could sew four together and it would equal an 18 inch block. There you so go. if you had four of these and four of these down here and two of your carpenter wheel dies blocks, um, you would have actually add a border to it and just have a really pretty wall hanging. Sure, yeah, that's okay? gorgeous. And then if, so how much is that cube right now with that great special? Yeah, so right now um, it's usually 249, right now it's 229. Okay. And then the six inch cube yep, absolutely. can make a nine inch um, churn dash. Love that. Right? Yeah. That's... And how much is our six inch cube right now? Six inch cube, same price, $229.99. Excellent. Okay, so if you're thinking, I'm gonna get the carpenter's wheel die, what size cubes do I want? That's yeah. the one you want with it, okay? Absolutely. And then this is our 12 inch cube mm -hmm. and so again, the cube system is based on a four patch, right? Mm -hmm. So if we make it a three by three grid, so one, two, three, one, two, three, these are six inch finished blocks. Sure. 
we could make an 18 inch block from our 12 inch cube as well. So the math for this die works beautifully with the six, nine and 12 inch cubes. So when you're thinking about that, today's a great day to get those, right? They're on sale. Absolutely. Okay. All right, so I just wanted to kind of show you that. And thank you to the lovely Erica for making some of our blocks here. Okay. There we go. All right, so let's lay out some fabric on this die. Okay, um, so we're gonna need, up here, shape A, we're gonna need the dark gray, the light gray, the medium gray, and then the red, which is this beautiful grunge right here. Okay, so I've already cut some of my A shapes. I've done this just a couple of times here. All right, so what we're gonna do, and while I lay on this fabric, um, these shapes are the, the diamonds, and then these are the white, and then shape B is right here. These are those half square triangles, okay? So I'm just gonna lay out some fabric on this die, and then we'll cut it, we'll have plenty of pieces. But Emily, tell us if people's, do they know carpenters? Oh my gosh, they sure do. And before I get too ahead of myself, Louise wants to know the number of the orophil that you use. Oh, I knew somebody was gonna ask that. That's why I kept it here. Oh look, my contact lenses are in. Okay, it is orophil number 2902. Perfect. Awesome, thank you so much for, for verifying that. so many of those. So yeah, Jenny knows um, her aunt's best friend is a carpenter. Um, <laughs> he um, took her old office room and turned it into a storage room for all her cooking supplies and another pantry. Oh, I want him to come to my house and right? make a new pantry for me. Absolutely. Okay, so shape B, I'm gonna lay this one down here first. If you look at the pattern, it has these cutting to subcut your fabric before you lay it out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna need some of these um, half square triangles here. Okay, so I have some there and I'm gonna put my white over. And on this die, there's um, enough shapes to make one block and just one pass through the cutter, which is why it's called a bob. All right, I'm gonna use my 10 by 24 cutting mat. Today I'm gonna to use my go big because I can. And don't forget about that bundle, right, Emily, that has the go big and this die? Yep, absolutely, that's for $649.99 with, that, um, with the, uh, the die and then the, um, the cutting mat as well as the go big. That's gonna be a great deal. It's awesomeness. It really, really is. And speaking of bobs, our uh, Janet wants to know what other bobs go great with the carpenter. Oh, I bet deal. Emily knows the answer to that. I have a couple of answers, <laughs> we do. actually, that happen to also be on special today. Oh, let's talk about them real quick. So we've got the Starry Path, which we saw in one of our quilts in the beginning of the show, um, which is a nine inch finished as well. That guy is on sale for $69.99 today. Okay. We also have the Glorified Nine Patch, uh, nine inch Love finish, that uh, which is also on sale for $69.99 today. So you're gonna okay. save $20. And then, um, you know, if you were to um, perhaps get those two together, um, that would qualify you, put you over that 125 to use the code 20 more today. There you go. There you go. See, we have such great deals right now. All right, so I'm just pulling back my fabric. Starry Path, you should all own Starry Path. It's a pretty one. It is so pretty. It's a really pretty one. Um, it was kind of fun. We'll, we'll give you this little bit of tidbit of info that we won't talk about very long. Um, I, we're in the process of testing dyes, and I was telling Emily the whole process of how we create test dyes before we create um, regular dyes. I know, for next year. That's I know so what cool. they are, some of them. Actually, Emily does too. <laughs> we were working on it this morning. Okay, so here is super, super important. Okay? You have to keep track of your pieces. Okay, so there's my red. So this is my beautiful medium grunge. This is my light grunge. Okay, you got to keep track of your pieces, folks. Otherwise, you're going to be so confused. Okay? Now, when you look at this block, you might think, ooh, this is super complicated. I bet it has Y seams, mm -hmm. but the reality is it has none Y seams. Now, that is so nice. Um, I'm gonna move this block over here. Now, look at this really high-tech way, Emily, I keep track of my pieces. Okay, <laughs> sticky notes. Okay, it works for me. It's old school, I love it. Yeah, okay, so here's B. 
and we know those B and the lights are gonna make these corners. And I'll explain it to you in just a second. Because believe it or not, this once I figured this out, I was like, oh, this makes sense now. Okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so hold on. And there's all my Bs. All right, well, I'm sorting out my pieces. Are people being carpenters and do we have questions? Yes, I was gonna say we do have a question. Let's um, answer questions. So Carol Ann is um, wondering about, about making the diamonds with her strip cutter, but can we explain, because I don't think we, you really could do that, or could you do it with your strip cutter? Well, here's the deal. So that's a great question, Carol Ann. Um, yes, I've shown you how to, um, I have one little thread right here. Um, I have shown you how to make diamonds with your strip die. But then the problem is you need all of these other shapes, these half square triangles and quarter square triangles right. to go with it. So yes, the answer is of course you can make diamonds with a strip die, okay. but this die has all the pieces including the half square triangles that are gonna fit right here on the outside of those diamonds and then the quarter square triangles and the half square triangles. So it's just gonna make your life a lot easier. Yeah, just get it all and <laughs> then it's all on one die board. <laughs> Because I don't know about you, but sometimes I think, oh, how do I find that? Absolutely. Okay. Now, once our pieces are cut, let's lay out our blocks so we know which way our block is sewn. And then when you're going to press, you want to press all your seams open. Now, I'm going to show you the super cool trick that I learned. Okay, here's my block. I'm going to fold it in quarters in just a second. Okay. Oh, the other day I had them all laid out and Pearl like was walking across and I was like, stop, she's our cat. <laughs> okay. Oh gosh. This block, this square, these are mirrored images. Okay. They are in different colors. So you got to keep track of them. Right. This block is different than this block, right? These are the mirrored images. Right. This block and this block are the same. This block and this block are the same. So when I was sewing this block, I chain pieced and I did two of this square and then I did two of this square, okay? So see, here's that mirrored image right here. It's gonna go perfectly. Also, that's how you know you're sewing it together correctly, okay? So I'm gonna go right here and we are gonna build half a block because you know, it, it always takes us longer than we think it's gonna take to do it. Now. Here's the other thing I learned, all right? So here's my half, okay? Now, D is the shape that goes on every single diamond, okay? That's D. And then C, these are half square triangles, so this is shape B, right? They're sewn together. All right, and then this right here, so this is shape C. I had to move my pin so I could <laughs> do it, okay? So look, right here. Wow. C are those quarter square triangles. B are half square triangles sewn together. So if you and your little quilting head can go, oh, look, this is a B and this is a B, this is a B and a B, because we've sewn them together right. to, be ha to be squares, then you're going to know that along the edge, so this is shape C, because they are quarter square triangles. I know. Once I figured out the math in it, I was like, oh, I could probably do that. Okay? All right. So let's, um, let's create a block, because that's how we should do this. All right, so we're gonna start, and we're gonna start right here with this little section, right here, okay? And then we're gonna add this little section down here, okay? All right, so what's gonna happen is, I already have that one done. So right here, this corner, that's what we're gonna create first. Okay, so as I'm laying out my pieces, Emily, do we have questions? Yes, and I have this okay. really cool comment from Sherry. Hi, Sherry. Her grandfather was a master carpenter. He, she says that we have several pieces of furniture he made, some with secret compartments where he would hide his penny stash for when he played cribbage. 
Okay, one, I love that he played cribbage, and two, that is hilarious. I would love to have secret stashes of pennies. That would be amazing, yes. like just little spots where you can just hide little notes and secret things. Yes. That would be so much I fun. I love that. Oh I love that. gosh, and I think we do have another question here. Okay. Um, Let's see, so um, sewing, she's sewing her squares together and if I sew too early, my fabric gets jammed and now I'm sewing too late and I have holes at my squares intersections. Where do I put my needle down, not chain stitching? Is she making just overall quilting or what block is she making? Let's see, it says sewing her squares together. Oh, for your puff quilts. Oh, that might be what it's, okay. maybe that's what she's asking Remember for, sure. when you're sewing the puff quilt, you gotta, the top is bigger than the bottom square, so you have to line up one corner and then tuck so that then the two corners here match. And then you have to turn it and add a tuck and turn it and add a tuck. If you don't add a tuck, then your squares aren't gonna line up and it's not gonna work. Right. And chain piece for days. Okay. Love that. And why is AccuQuilt fabric um, better cutter better than rotary cutting? Okay, I don't know how long it would take you to cut all of these pieces with a rotary cutter, but I certainly would not have done it. Plus, you wouldn't have you then when you're all done sewing it, you would have to cut off the dog ears. Yeah. AccuQuilt is 90% faster than traditional cutting cutting methods, and every single time it's accurate. All right, Emily, I'm going to lay these out. Will you tell us one more time what the code or this promo is today. Absolutely. So with uh, any orders over $125, yes. um, with that code 20MORE uh, or 20MORE, you're going to get an additional $20 off that order. So, um, you know, we've got markdowns that are, you know, a certain percentage off. Um, with those additional markdowns, you can get up to 43% off select items. Um, right. So you're just gonna wanna put those items in your cart, um, you know, make sure you're at that 125 and then you can put that 20 more coupon in for an additional $20 off. See, it's great. And don't forget to share because I'm gonna give away one of our Go Carpenter Wheel dies. All right, to some lucky viewer, Emily's gonna announce at the end of the show. So I'm gonna start down here because I'm building this little corner here. Okay, so here's my shape C and my A, and then this is D. And I listen, I laid it out every single time because the chances of sewing it wrong were pretty darn good. Okay, all right, so then I'm gonna add, and notice I make sure that, and when you follow the pattern, it's really gonna be easy, okay? So I'm gonna create mirror images. So I'm gonna sew um, this, light triangle to this diamond, or the white triangle to the diamond. Yeah, and you're just good Brock right there. All right, and then I'm gonna create this to the top. Now, some of you are gonna say to me, Pam, that does not work. And the answer is, yeah, there is, because there's a quarter inch seam allowance built in, yeah. okay? So I'm gonna take some of my pieces, Move my phone. All right, Emily, do we have people who are carpenters? Yes, um, Ingrid says we have a grandnephew who, though he isn't professional, he's a wonderful carpenter. He has made dressers, beds, and hope chests for family members. He does beautiful work and he's only 20 years old. Wow. That's pretty cool. That's amazing. I would have loved to have had a trade like that at 20 years old. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. And what a skill to have. That's gonna get him through, I mean, he could have this life do that professionally. Yeah, exactly. His life is going to get him there. Okay. Yep. That is All so right. Cool. So this is that shape B and I'm sewing it to a light diamond and you're going to just follow the pattern and it's going to be really easy. And the cool thing is, um, notice right here, we've cut off all those dog ears. So this lines up perfectly. So from here to here is a perfect quarter inch seam. Okay. And you're gonna follow, Brock has put up our little graphic there. So you're gonna follow this and you wanna make one and then the other in reverse because we're doing mirrored images, okay? Okay, I wore my little flannel shirt today because it was looking super cute, but it is a little warm here in the dream studio. <laughs> I know those lights. Okay. Oh, see, look, already I'm stressed about this. All right, so this is the shape that comes here, hold on. And I'm gonna press my seams open. Otherwise you have tons of bulk. 
And are you pressing to the dark slide on this? No, one? I'm just gonna really truly press them open. Okay. And hey, don't forget, we sell these little shovel irons and mats on our website. They're too cute. So um, apparently, um, this is so cool. So Shell's daughter is a carpenter. Okay. Um, and then Tamara herself actually says she loves doing woodworking along with quilting. Oh my goodness, see? Which is so cool. I mean, just how the creativity is amazing. Okay, so now I'm gonna continue, right? So see how I'm sewing this A to this shape C. C's are quarter square triangles. It's gonna stand alone like the cheese, <laughs> okay? It's all good. And again, when I made this, boy, I just really chain pieced. Once I figured out that shapes B and C were quarter square triangles and half square triangles, okay, it worked out great. All right, so let's see if my iron is working. Ooh, there. It wasn't turned on, so give it a second here. Oh, okay. That's all right. So you're just gonna follow those instructions, right? Mm -hmm. On how to um, create the block and nice Brock has put our graphics up here for us. All right. And I'm just gonna finger press this here so we can get on so you can see. All right, so notice how this is lining up perfectly and this is how it's gonna create that block, right? So here we go. So now I'm gonna add this shape B to the top of this. And it's gonna work. It's gonna be great. <laughs> Emily, tell us, um, do people have more questions for us? So, well, they're, they're um, asking about the cubes, which we talked about the, the six, the nine, and the 12 can be yeah. used to make this, uh, to work along with this block. Um, Carol is wondering, does it matter which direction the seams go if you don't open the seams? Um, I'm gonna tell you, Carolyn, yeah, kind of it does. Because what you don't wanna do is, you wanna really get rid of that bulk, okay? okay? So as soon as my iron is screaming hot here, ooh, yeah, there, never do that, quilters. Ooh, here's another good question from Marilyn. Hi, Marilyn. She is wondering what setting triangle would die, die would go with this uh, for on point, or would we have one at this time? We don't or? have one that's this big, that I big. know. Yeah, it's a little, that's our largest block, I think, that at least that I've ever seen. Yeah, it is, it's the biggest one we've ever made. Maybe someday they'll do the setting triangle to do along I with I know, it. I would love it. Hopefully that's in the works. When yeah, this is, <laughs> this is such a great block. And it's really a traditional block. It's been around for a long time. But I do love the little modern spin mm -hmm. that it created. Absolutely. Okay. I actually got myself a, a setting triangle die to go along with my 8-inch. Yes. Yeah. So that'll I be I think fun. that's fun. I know. I, I tell know. you, once you turn them on point... Mm -hmm. It's just going to be great. It's like a whole new world. Okay. Ooh, there's a song like that, right? Okay, hold on here. I have, all my, I have all my sticky notes. I wish I had been the person who invented sticky notes. Okay, so look. Now I'm going to sew these two sections together. And I'm going to do that by lining up this light and, and medium gray diamond, right? Brock, are we good? Okay. And then once you're done with it, Pam, Sheila would like to see what the back of the block looks like once it's put Oh, together. there you go. There we go. Okay. Yes, we will do that. So uh, Teresa says that her husband's hobby is blacksmithing and mine is quilting. So we laugh about being cotton and steel, but that's already taken. <laughs> oh, that is super fun. <laughs> I think that's so sweet. Um, and Janice says that in junior high, high, she chose to take wood shop instead of home ec. Um, she taught her teacher how to do dovetails in her project. Um, and she was so lucky to have her dad teach me. Oh, that is so fun. So that would be pretty cool. You're, you're teaching the teacher. I love it. You're schooling him. There you Janice, go. That's pretty awesome. When I was um, younger, much, when I was in middle school, um, they offered home ec one semester and then wood shop the, re the rest of the year, so the second semester. So I have a brother, Brian, who is just 
um, 14 months younger than I, or older than I am. Mm -hmm. And so we took it together. And so during woodshop, he did, like my job was to sand things. Okay. And then he did the projects there. And then when we went to home ec, um, I did all the baking and he like prefused, or you know, he prefused, he preheated the oven. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> so look at this. So now we've sewn this row to the bottom. All right. So now we're going to create this row here, which is the opposite of this one on the other side. Okay. Don't forget quilters. All of our videos live on our Facebook and YouTube pages. So if you need to go back and watch this one or others, you can, and you can just go back and go, Oh yeah, that's right. Pam told me that was the shape C and that was the shape B. Okay. All right, so now, hey, do you know we have a blog? Emily, you do want to tell us about our blog? Absolutely, yeah. So we've got a fabulous blog where we have exclusive patterns. Exclusive. Exclusive. Only find them there. And then um, you can engage with our go-getters, our pattern writers, and some folks who work here at AccuQuilt. Yes. Um, and chat with them in the comments. So it's a great place to, to engage. And yesterday on our Tuesday show, we had all sorts of delicious recipes that we shared. Yeah. And those are on the blog this week. So listen, if you haven't watched yesterday's show, it lives on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. All right. So now I am, I'm going to finish this row here. And remember, you want to make four sets and then four sets in reverse. All right. So now I'm going to follow this and just lay out my pieces. This is so pretty. Okay. Now, what shape is this quilters? I took it off there so you wouldn't see. Yes, it is shape B because it is a half square triangle. Okay. Okay, hold on here. I have to think. All right, Emily, tell us if people are, um, yeah, uh, having uh, carpenters. <laughs> sure. That was the word I was looking for. Yes. Um, actually, I have a quick question too from Kim before um, we move on because we, when we mentioned setting triangles, she's wondering if we could explain what on point is. Oh, so do more. you want to talk about that? Yes. So, okay. So if I'm explaining this correctly, when you have a quilt block, it's, you know, parallel. It's, you know, it's a Right, it goes. It's a square, it vertical. goes, ver yeah, vertical horizontal. and horizontal. Whereas when you flip it on point, it goes so that the point is up and down. Right, so here I have one. Here I can show you. Perfect, yeah, sometimes it's easier will not to see work. it happen. We will not lose our work here, okay? <laughs> I can use my word. So again, so here is our, how typically you see a, a block in a quilt, right? Mm -hmm. And when we turn it on point, there that C doesn't look completely different. Whole new. So then if, if this were the corner of my quilt, you would need a triangle to finish here and a triangle and a triangle here to finish um, putting my block together so that the, it stays stable and it's lengthwise green. Okay, this is like some wicked voodoo math that I do not know how to do, but AccuQuilt does. And so we have setting triangles for the four, six, eight, nine, ten, and twelve inch cubes. So this is a nine inch block. I would use my nine inch setting triangles, and it has the end triangle and then the side triangles. So you do not have to do voodoo wicked math. <laughs> okay, that is that is the best. Love that. And that was a great question. And you should, if you are getting that cube today, that nine inch cube, boy, I would tell you to really get those setting triangles. Yeah. Okay. So look. I'm just going to kind of chain piece a couple of my pieces here. I'm keeping track of my B's and C's. And we had all these great um, little graphics in there so that you can see how to put your block together. Again, look at how perfect these are going to fit together. You would never do this cutting it by hand. Yes. And Pam, I'm double checking yes. on our website. The setting triangles are part of the markdowns. <gasps> no way! Yes. So, okay, so how much are the nine inch setting triangles? So let's see, the nine inch, I believe it's gonna be the same price as the eight or the 12. Let me just double yes. check. The eight inch is $89.99. The 12 inch is $80.99. $80 so let me wow. just see what the nine, I know. So it's a great, great time to get these all because they're already, what's nice is you don't even have to enter the promo code for the discounts. It's literally just that $20. Right, it's just the, there. Yeah. It's just happy. Just an extra, extra little gift to you. There we go. Okay, <laughs> see how I'm pressing my seams open quilters? That is just gonna let it lay so flat. Okay. 
And truly, once I got the hang of sewing my little shapes together, I, I, once I laid them out, it went super fast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the nine inch is $80.99. Excellent, throw one in your cart quilters. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm gonna add this red grunge. The pattern tells you to create four different colors. I think they're like red and, oh, red and blue and green and yellow maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm just gonna do red grunge. Love that. And I like how this block, the color scheme is kind of, it kind of looks like your wood hanging, hanging that you have behind you. Right. It was very clever. Maybe you could match it, make a matching quilt to go along with it. Listen, I have so many pieces for a carpenter <laughs> square, for sure I'm gonna make at least a wall hanging. <laughs> it was like pickle dish. We had pickle dish for days. Yes. And um, so I have lots of pickle dish blocks. I think Quilters, this is when that quarter inch seam is so important. It's not a scant quarter inch seam. Do you remember what that means, Emily? We talked about it last week. Scant quarter inch, okay. Mm -hmm. Isn't that when you, um, no, it's not when you fold it, is it? Nope, it's just when it's just a little bit smaller. That's right. That's a little right. bit smaller. Okay, so look at this. I love this. That little iron is just so sweet. <laughs> It just makes such quick work of it too. When um, when I am at home sewing, look at this. Okay, I'm gonna take my little pieces off here. Okay, so now we've done this strip. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna line it up and we're gonna sew these two pieces together and then it will make a whole block. So hold on one sec, we're gonna sew it. Um, when I am sewing at home, I love to watch TV. We, we had a whole AQ Live one time about what's your favorite thing to watch while you sew. Mm -hmm. um, I love to sit and do that. And then I have that little shovel iron and my gray mat. So I don't have to be worried about, you know, getting up and, you know, getting my big iron to do one little piece. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Okay. So this is fun. <clears throat> Um, apparently, Kim's husband is an excellent carpenter who made southwestern tables and a blanket chest for her. Oh my gosh! Good job, Kim's husband. It's a great place to store your quilts. Yes. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Oh, I love it when the magic works. <laughs> okay. So these two halves make one of our sections, okay? Oh, see, I gotta keep track of my pieces, okay? So I'm gonna press this open, all right? And then we are almost done, so don't forget to share because we're giving away one of these Go Carpenter wheel dies. We surely are. And do we have any other questions, Emily, or other quilters saying they know carpenters? They do, yes. Um, Annette's husband has figured out he's an awesome woodworker and she's so lucky. She said he's made beautiful cutting boards, coasters, an accent wall in her kitchen and a set of beautiful cupboard doors. Oh my word. Love that. Look at how perfect this is. Okay, we're gonna sew the last block. Cause I have several of these at home and then I can make a whole other carpenter wheel. That is awesome. Okay. This is so cool. And and just to clarify, so setting triangles, Ruth Ruth wants to verify, they can only be used for square on point blocks. Um, you could technically use them with a, you could. a non on point, but yes, this, you could. The setting triangle would but just- they are built, they are built to help you with the grain of blocks that are set on point. That's right. Okay. Okay. Perfect. I know that was a whole discussion that I had with somebody um, not too long ago. Mm -hmm. about setting triangles and, and how to really utilize them. Absolutely. And I'm gonna tell you that I, until AccuQuilt came up with setting triangles, I did not set my blocks on point because that is wicked voodoo math that I cannot do in my head. Mm -hmm. And what I ended up doing, Emily, this will make you laugh, was I would just cut like really big squares oh. and then kind of chop it off a little bit okay. and then sew it to my block and then I would just trim it down with my rotary cutter. Oh, nice, okay. Yeah, there was no math involved. Wow. It was just chunks of stuff. Chip, ch okay, I love it. Hey, that. look at this, quilters. Look at this. 
Okay, so you're gonna repeat this um, block. You're gonna make four of these, sub, these corners, right? And put them together. And then you're gonna repeat it. You need four of these to make the wall hanging that's on the packaging. I'm gonna tell you, this would be a really cool like medallion quilt where the, the carpenter's wheel was just the center block. The quilt behind us, Emily, um, do you know the, sh the um, we used our 12 inch cube. Do you know the block we made besides Carpenter's Wheel in there? Um, wasn't that the Ohio Star? It is the Ohio Star. So again, if you use your 12 inch cube, you can make an 18 inch block. And I do love Ohio Star. Hey, listen, if you live in Ohio, you're welcome that we have an Ohio Star die. Exactly. Okay. So I'm just gonna go like this. And while you're pressing, Pam, Heidi yes. wants to know if that little iron is, is worth it. Does it make it worthwhile? Oh, listen, the fact that I don't have to get up <laughs> and get to my iron, absolutely it is worth it, okay? So now look at my little block. So you can see right here, it's the same, right? So you need two of them. I'm gonna unfold my thing. Wow. This is this block down here. So when you're making this block, Chain piece, chain piece. All these shapes, you're gonna lay them out just like we laid them out here. These are mirrored images, so you're gonna um, put them in the other direction. To finish your quilt, you're gonna add batting between the top and the backing. You're gonna quilt as desired um, and bind, and don't forget to miter your corners. Okay, so here's one last trick. Okay, I used, okay, do you love this? I do love it. Not often do I look at a block and go, oh, I love that, but this one I do. Okay, hold on, I need my die. Emily, tell us one last, if there are people who know carpenters. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Linda's husband built their house. Oh, Linda's husband built their house. That is so cool. It's beautiful. I would love to live in a house that I made. That's like the coolest thing ever. Um, okay. I yeah. love it. <laughs> so cool. All right, here is my last trick. I used striped fabric to make these little chevron blocks. Oh. I know, huge shout out to Barbara Harper. She is one of our um, experts. She taught me how to cut stripes using our dies. So I forever will be in debt. So I'm gonna show you how to cut stripes. So see, look, I had such a great time. I think we did this on the show. That is so When we cool. launched it. Oh man. Look at how fun this is. Really neat. I do love it. And Barbara gave me a really great tip. She said, Pam, buy fabric that have stripes that are different widths. Because okay. then it creates kind of a cool image, okay? So what you wanna do is, um, you could tape it, I'm not gonna tape it today. You could use painter's tape, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna line up my stripes so that they are the same all along these diamonds, okay? And then I'm gonna fold it in half. Okay, because what you need are mirrored images sure. of your stripes. Okay, so look at that. All right, so you could do a whole one and just go back this way. All right, and then I'm gonna put my cutting mat on top. You could use a smaller mat. You could use a six by 12 mat, okay? All right, while this is cutting, don't forget to join. Lynn and Eric and I on Tuesday, November 16th, 12 noon Central Time, we're going to launch two new dies. Not just one, but two. Um, Emily, why do they want to register? Yeah, so they can be eligible to win the prizes and drawings yes. during the show. Yes. yes. Enter to win is truly what you want. <laughs> and while this is cutting, tell us real quick our promo, Emily. Yes. Okay, so we already have a ton of great discounts. So yes. things are already marked down on the website. Um, our promo for today is 20 more. So okay. that's $20 off of your order of 125 or more. Okay. Um, so you will you can, you know, that just applies on the order total. So you can add plenty of discounted items in there that are, as I said, are already discounted. You don't need to worry about that additional percentage off. Okay. But, um, yeah, so we could, you could go with the, the six, nine or the 12 inch cubes. Yes. We've got those nine inch bob dies that we talked about. Starry um, path and? 
and the uh, glorified nine glorified patch. Nine patch. Yep. And then I believe, aren't you gonna be talking about the oven mitt here coming yes, up again? we'll talk about that in one second. Okay, perfect. And then- um, Setting triangles. The setting triangles would be another really great those thing. Those are to, brand new, Those that's the first time they've been on sale. It is, yeah, that's the first time I've seen okay. that. Are you ready for this? This is, I just love to cut stripes now. It's just my new favorite thing. Okay, so look at this. Okay, look at these pretty little chevrons. Okay, and oh, see this is what happens. I get excited and then I mess them up. Okay, now I'm gonna teach you something here because I learned a few things. If you sew these together like this, what happens is right here is a, um, you have to do a, a Y seam, which gives me headaches. Okay, so don't sew your chevrons together first. Add shape D, which are these tiny little half square triangles, right? Mm -hmm. Sew them together on both sides. Like this. Don't forget this video lives on our Facebook page. So when you get home, or when you get home, you're already home. <laughs> um, when you're thinking about it, go, what did Pam say? This is how you do it. Wow. Okay. I just love that fabric. The colors are so cool together it's so too. so fun. It is so fun. Barbara made some amazing ones. Okay. Absolutely. So I'm gonna sew this here and I'm gonna press my seam open. Press my seams open, right? And then I'm gonna sew the halves together to make my chevrons, okay? So this would be really fun um, because you could just Put them together and make a row of chevrons for a border. I just think it's super cool. Mm -hmm. So again, a huge shout out to our good friend Barbara Harper for no one stuff. Okay, look at that. So All with one die. Okay, before we announce the winner, oh, well, let's announce a winner and then we'll talk about it next week because next week's going to be super fun. <laughs> All right, Emily, do we have a winner? We surely do. Right. Shall we get a drum roll, please? Yes. All right, our winner today is Marsha Buchanan Lassiter. Yay, Marsha, congratulations. Congratulations. Listen, Marsha, you need to show us your finished carpenter wheel blocks. Yes. Because that will be so fun. Absolutely. I'm excited for that. Okay, all right. Next week on AccuQuilt Live, we are going to make oven mitts. Now, if you watched the show yesterday, Eric and I had an ugly oven mitt challenge. Okay, so here is mine, which is called the oven mitt of all seasons. So it has like Christmas fabric and flamingos and um, Husker fabric, go Huskers. Well, I don't even think I can say that anymore. And um, Easter fabric, and then it, I bound it in Halloween fabric. Oh, and look, Hanukkah fabric in the back. So cute. I sent a picture to my son Mason, and he said, Mom, that is super ugly. And I thought, yay, I will win. But here was the lovely Erica's mom oven mitt. Okay, um, we have a neighbor, his name is Brian, he has chickens, so I call him Chicken Brian. And Chicken Brian now bought a rooster, so see the rooster? Oh, how cute is that? Yes, and she embellished it with faux fur and pom-poms <laughs> and sequins for days. Okay, this one by a landslide. Everybody loved, they thought Erica's oven mitt was the ugliest and it's super fun, okay? <laughs> So next week, I am gonna show you some tips and tricks on making those oven mitt dies. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now, you should order your oven mitt today. Our team is behind us right now and they will ship it to you because we have super limited stock on the oven mitt die. And once that oven mitt die is gone, we will not get any till January. So if you order it today, you'll have it by next week's show. And um, I think that all of you should, like in your quilt guild, you should have like an ugly oven mitt challenge. Oh, I agree. Wouldn't that be fun? Oh, absolutely. Or as you're, you know, as you're giving gifts away, you should give ugly oven mitts. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. On behalf of our entire team, we have Morgan and Leslie off-site here in the Dream Studio. I have Justin, Brock, and Joe, and of course, Emily. I am Pam Heller reminding you at AccuQuilt, we 